So welcome everyone to ERA Lisbon. Uh, I'm here with Professor Michael Glickson from Jerusalem and I'm delighted to talk to him about the study of the eagerly awaited raised CRT study which was presented yesterday at the Late Breakers. Uh, so Professor Glickson firstly uh, welcome and uh, congratulations on, on the presentation from the study. Um, so tell me what was the preface for, for doing the study in the first place? Well, the, the, as you know, about 30% of patients who, are, who receive CRT systems do not respond. And now, one of the potential reasons is that you don't really reach areas that are latest activated or you reach scar areas. Uh, for this purpose, uh, speckle tra tracking uh, radio strain imaging was developed and actually was proven in previous studies to be able to target the lead to a better position and uh, to improve the results or decrease the non-response uh, okay. rate. Uh, so we designed a study that was aimed to test it in a real-life situation, nine different uh, cent centers in Israel and one in the United States, uh, in patients specifically with ischemic cardiomyopathy. Okay. We recruited 172 patients uh, randomized them in a two-to-one manner to either uh, imaging guided implantation versus uh, control uh, where the lead was located according to the physician preference okay and we looked at uh, outcomes at six months and uh, 12 months okay uh, and when when the lead was was implanted conventionally w did you use uh, any lead did you use a quadrupolar lead or was it the preference of the operator? Well, uh, until the middle of the study, all of them were bipolar. We okay. then used quadripolar, but then uh, we located the relevant pole to the area of uh, that was uh, recommended. Okay. So, um, and, and tell me a bit about how you, for the image-guided arm, how did the centers, how did you decide to, uh, to, to transpose the information that the echo gave you uh, onto the, onto the x-ray for the implanter? So, every patient underwent echo at the center. The echo was sent, was uh, transmitted to the Mayo Core Lab. And within 24 hours, we got the recommendation about the best segment Okay. out of six circumferential segments okay. in the mid-ventricular levels. Yeah. Uh, this was translated into three areas on fluoro. Okay. So the anterior, lateral and posterior area. So we, we had a kind of an of a image that translates the echo recommendation to fluoro yeah. performance. And uh, the operators were instructed to use this scheme to locate the lead. Okay. And then when they went and implanted the lead and to, to, to a target segment, if they, if they weren't able to get to the target, then presumably they were, they were able to, to go then to another was, target. There was a second best and third best. But okay. since we're only talking about three segments, segments, we don't have too many That many options. options. Okay. And so what were the, what were the headline uh, results from the study? Well, the headline is that there was no difference whatsoever between the groups. So the targeting of the lead by speckle tracking radio strain imaging did not result in any clinical benefit. Uh, when we analyzed the location of the leads, we realized that almost 40% of the leads did not reach the recommended position. Right. So uh, the fact that you cannot always reach or maybe not even recognize the correct place, I think this was the main component of the result, of the negative result. It may also be that the mechanism is not really, uh, is not really correct, but uh, we did a sub-analysis on the final location of the leads and we saw a tendency in the patients in whom the leads were placed at the correct place, mm -hmm. whether they were in the treatment or the control group. We just okay. analyzed it yeah. by the final location. There was a tendency, but not much more than tendency, to better results in the correctly placed leads. Okay. And uh, was this was this 2D strain or 3D strain? 2D strain. 2D strain. 2D strain. So do you think that there's obviously there was there's been some great talks at the Congress and updates in, in imaging. Um, do you think that the new new modalities in terms of 3D, 4D, the, the extra bells and whistles, do you think that makes a difference, or do you think the technology itself is uh, is limited and and we need to look at alternative uh, modalities? Well, it may 
Well, I think the two improvements may be made. One is developing tools to reach the exact location. Yeah. And the other may be better imaging. I don't know what would have happened if we used 3D. Uh, obviously, the study took a few years. Yeah. So by the Things time that you finish, as always, by the time that you finish the study, you have new technologies coming in. But uh, I think that if we were able to do bigger studies with more accurate positioning of the lead, mm -hmm. we may either prove or disprove the concept, uh, the, the concept of locating leads by imaging. Okay. And, and let me just ask you about the endpoint. So there's also been a lot of discussion, as, as you know, from the, from the trials about what we use as endpoint. And one of the big difficulties, I think, as, uh, as implanters is identifying the responder, despite de deciding whether we use volume, whether we use ejection fraction. And there's clearly flaws with, with each of them. And um, what's your opinion on, on what we use? Should we just do the same as what's been used before, or should we challenge that and maybe use something different? As you know, there are about 30 different different parameters yeah. that people are using for response. At the time that we started the study, we thought that the most established, the most accurate and objective measure was measures were echo measures. Yeah. And we used the decrease in uh, left ventricular and systolic volume yeah. as our main main goal. I'm not aware of a much better no. parameter. And I think as well, using, the, using something volumetric uh, ideally gives you a continuous variable, so in theory you should be right. able to get a better, a better result. Okay, um, so going forward, what, what do you see as the next steps for, uh, for image guidance? Do you think that bi bigger trials that are, are powered to detect perhaps smaller differences, or do you think um, uh, we should be looking at, at different, different modalities? Bigger trials, some of them are ongoing, yeah. maybe different modalities. Yeah. As, as the commentator yesterday said, MRI is probably more accurate as far as scar, scar detection, and also may give us some information on, on, on the synchrony. Uh, so maybe MRI guided, much larger studies may be the yeah. future. Perfect. Well, that's certainly something that we're, we're looking at. So hopefully this will, uh, uh, the trials from image guidance with MRI and CT, I think mm -hmm. we'll probably report uh, maybe in a few years' time. Perfect. Well, thank you very much thank and congratulations much. again. Thank you.